Celiac disease is a lifelong chronic immune-mediated disorder that occurs in both children and adults. It is actually one of the most common chronic disorders in children in Sweden these days. About 1-2% to of the Swedish population suffer from celiac disease, which is characterized by small intestinal inflammation triggered by exposure to gluten. Gluten occurs in wheat, rye and belly, but not in oats. The prevalence of celiac disease has increased in the last 20-30 years, both in Western Europe and in the United States, and is increasingly attracting attention in the research world. This was a multidisciplinary effort by 18 physicians and three non-physicians from in total eight countries. We divided celiac disease into nine different working areas. We looked at such areas as screening for celiac disease, long-term management, diagnostics, classification, genetics, etc. And then we came up with this paper, which is a guideline paper from the British Society of Gastroenterology. We chose to publish this paper in GUT, which is uh, the highest ranking journal in gastroenterology uh, besides gastroenterology from the United States. Uh, most British Society of Gastroenterology guidelines are published in GUT and we're very happy about the attention our paper has got. The main findings of our paper is that um, duodenal biopsy is still the mainstay of the celiac disease diagnosis and cannot fully be replaced by celiac serology. There is an ongoing debate as to whether celiac biopsy can be omitted and uh, the Child Celiac Disease Organization has suggested that in certain children it can be replaced, but we do not believe that is the case in adults. The second finding is also that we underline the importance of a strict gluten-free diet. Um, it has been expected that a gluten-free diet is important for long-term prognosis of celiac disease, but it is only lately that this has been shown, partly by my own research group in collaboration with Columbia University, where we have shown that mucosal healing decreases the risk of lymphoma and of hip fracture. Well, being at the Karolinska Institute is very important to me and my research group. Most of my research is registry-based, and Sweden is a fantastic country for registry-based research. Through linkage with the unique personal identity number, we can access data from various sources, match them, and then follow individuals for a very long time, um, together with great power that comes from examining hundreds of thousands of people sometime, and long follow-up, we can examine even rare events and calculate both absolute and relative risks. Uh, being at Karolinska and especially MEB, I mean, fosters that kind of enthusiasm, creativity, and uh, interesting research uh, that I, I love to work with.